So I did remember to turn on the backlights this time, but I didn't remember to turn off the cat water fountain and it sounded like I was peeing myself the whole time. So let's just redo this intro. Hello and welcome back. Sorry it's taken so long. It turns out between running a business, trying to play D&D twice a week and trying to finish Red Dead Redemption, there's no time for making videos. I don't know why I committed to weekly videos, but here we go. This today's video is going to be a career story, but instead of looking at this beautiful face all day, you get to look at my art skills. It's going to be great. Here we go. I have always loved animals. As a kid, I wanted to be one. I also wanted to become a vet, a sheep shearer, or work for the RSPCA. Though my very first job was a little different, working the cashier at McDonald's at 15 years old. Which was apparently a childhood dream of mine, considering this letter I wrote to my future self in 2002 at 8 years old. It was a good job, but I just didn't enjoy it. Then in 2009, when I was in year 10, we had to do work experience. I'm not sure if it's a universal thing for schools, but work experience is pretty self-explanatory. It's a week that you would spend at the workplace getting paid absolute peanuts, like five bucks a day, for the experience of having a job. It was part of our curriculum at school. I wanted to do mine at the vet clinic, but I didn't realise you had to organise it pretty far in advance due to its popularity. So I just sort of gave up on the idea of work experience and thought I would spend the week sitting at school catching up on homework. One day, mum had come home from shopping and she handed me a business card for the local dog grooming salon. She said she'd seen it on her errands and had popped in to ask if they were taking on work experience kids. The owner of the business had told her that I was more than welcome, but that it wasn't just playing with puppies all day and that I may get peed on, I may get pooed on and I may get bitten. Mum told her that it wouldn't worry me in the slightest, and of course, she was right. I was rapt to be able to spend the week with dogs. My week of work experience was spent drying dogs at first, then I learned to wash dogs, and then I would just sweep hair and do general cleaning in between. I really enjoyed getting to be with dogs all week, and I remember admiring the work the groomers were doing. I was really hoping to clip some hair like a sheep shearer, but I'm now glad they didn't let me because I would have done goof somehow with my two days experience. <laughs> The girls were all lovely and it felt like a little family there. At the end of my week's work experience, I was saddened it would come to a close. I got my work experience report back and in the comments section, the boss had written that she would love to see me back as part of the team and I was asked if I wanted a job. Of course I accepted and when everyone at school was bragging about how much they had been paid, I was bragging that I would just scored a job working with dogs. I was still working at McDonald's at the time, so it was a busy period of high school, working at Macca's after school, and working every Saturday at the salon. A full day off was rare, but I was glad to be working in a job that I loved. Some weekends I worked 8am to 3pm at the salon, and then 6pm to midnight at Macca's. Eventually, I was offered to work each day after school at the salon as well to help finish up the last dogs and clean, which meant, thankfully, that I was working enough at the salon to be able to quit McDonald's. Again, it was busy, but it was all in one place and I would leave school and walk to the salon every day. Being in the salon so often meant I was able to be taught more often and I think I learned pretty quickly. I worked there for four years, in which time I was taught to groom all sorts of dogs. One of the girls there would tell me that she wanted a Samoyed one day and I would always tell her she was crazy. Why would you want to work all day and then work on your own dog after work? The salon owner is an amazing groomer and I was incredibly lucky to have been trained by her. If you're wanting to become a groomer, I think this is the number one way to learn. Having hands-on experience under training from a quality professional is going to be far better than any short course can offer. But those courses will be a good start if you can't find anyone in your area to employ you. I entered my first dog grooming competition in 2012 with a Bichon mix named Molly. Looking at the before and after now, the dog looks exactly the same. <laughs> I really didn't do all that much as she didn't have a ton of coat to begin with, but I still came away with a ribbon, so that was nice. At 19 years old, in September of 2013, I'd moved out of home into a new city with my partner at the time, and I'd gotten a job with the company of my dreams, the RSPCA. Ever since I was a child, I've admired and adored them and have wanted to work for them so badly. I was the only groomer at the location, so it became a wonderful learning experience for me. I already knew how to groom, but here I got to experiment with ways that a grooming business should run. Through trial and error, I learned how to work effectively on my own, how to problem solve, and I learned to own my own work, my mistakes, and my achievements. There were staff who would take the phone calls and the check-ins and outs for me, which allowed me to focus entirely on my work. The store I worked at also had adoptions for dogs, cats, guinea pigs, and rabbits, and it was where I came across my first dog. We'd had dogs as a family, but this one was all mine. She was an 11-year-old Samoyed named Tara. 
<laughs> I know I said I was never going to get a Samoy. <laughs> I was only supposed to be grooming her. She was in terrible condition. But after the five hours it took me to groom her, I had fallen in love. She was the sweetest, most gentle, loving creature I've ever met. And she is responsible for my Samoyed obsession, despite the fact that I'd previously told anyone who would listen that I was never going to get one. Working for the RSPCA was wonderful. The staff, again, felt like a little family to me. I got to meet a whole bunch of lovely people who would volunteer their time and energy to help care for the animals. I met hundreds and hundreds of pets who found new homes, the people who came in wanting to support this charity, and the client base I had there was incredible. I was so proud to be responsible for creating a good reputation for grooming for myself and my store. One of my proudest grooming achievements was in 2014 when I placed first at the Royal Melbourne Grooming Competitions for my category. Out of, I think it was about a dozen people, I was absolutely wrapped. Much better result than the last time I entered a comp. <laughs> Embarrassingly soon after moving in with that boyfriend, we broke up and he moved out. I had to learn really quickly how to live solo for the first time in my life. My pockets became much lighter when I had to foot the bill entirely on my own and I started to feel a pinch. I went week to week with my money and though I'd always considered myself to be financially responsible, I didn't seem to be getting ahead. And being me, who's too proud to ask for help, I decided to start grooming dogs from home to put some extra breathing room in my wallet. By then, Tara had sadly passed away and I decided to name my new business venture in her memory as everyone said she looked like a little polar bear. My grooming prices were stupid cheap, but it was the first step towards financial self-dependency for me. My business grew slowly but surely until I was grooming dogs at home most days after work and on my days off as well. Sadly, all good things must come to an end and the location I worked at unfortunately had to close down in September of 2017. While it was intimidating to consider the fact that I would lose all financial stability, I was incredibly lucky to have a loyal client base who would follow me anywhere. Encouraged by colleagues, family and friends, I decided to take the leap into full-time self-employment and it has turned out amazing for me. I had been saving to buy a house, but I used the money instead to fund my venture and I managed to find a commercial property that I could both live and work in. My family and friends were amazing in helping me clean up and renovate. And I started trading the day after my employment finished and it's just taken off since then. Thank you so much for watching. There's nothing I love more than being self-employed and I just want to share it with everybody. If you have any questions or anything like that, Instagram or the YouTube comments, please don't contact my business. Just Instagram or here. Same as always. See you in the next video.